In today's video, I'll be sharing five reasons as to why you may be struggling with rotation in your backswing and downswing. A lot of people come to me thinking that they have mobility problems or they have flexibility issues, but after reviewing these five reasons, you'll understand or have a better understanding of why you may be struggling with mobility. And a lot of the times people just struggle with maneuvering themselves correctly, which will limit your range of motion. And if you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like. And if you are new to my channel, hit that subscribe button because it really helps me to create more videos like this for you guys. Now let's get started. All right, so reason number one has to do with your posture at setup. So the reason why it, it can influence a lot of things is because the way that you set up um, obviously changes the position of your, your lower body, your upper body, and that can actually influence your, your range of motion and your mobility. So a lot of the times when players come in, most players would set up like this. They have a lot of bending in the knees, they have their posture a bit more upright, their weight's kind of a bit more into their heels, and their arms kind of hang away from them like this. Okay, so when you want to add rotation in the backswing, if you have a lot of bending in the knees, typically the player would kind of look something like this, okay? They don't really change a lot of flex in their knees um, because there's quite a lot of bend in them, and they tend to kind of go back just with their arms like this, okay? So what you'd want to do instead is you want to make sure that the weight is kind of much, pretty much in the center of the foot. You can see how I'm just moving my weight a bit more forward. Maybe in the balls of the feet is okay as well. Now, next is that you just want a slight bend in the knees, okay? You can kind of see I went from here to about here. And then second is that you want to feel like your chest is a bit more over it. So if you are a player that was kind of sitting back um, with your arms away from you, the feeling a lot of the times uh, is that you'll feel like you're looking over a ledge a little bit more, okay? So the feeling is that your chest is a bit more on top of the golf ball with like straight knees. It'll feel like straight, but it's not. It's just a slight bend, okay? So when your body is in, the, is in that position, you can actually start to like, you'll have more freedom in your arms and it'll be easier to change the flex in your knees, okay? So the, no, the next thing is just your, what you're doing with your back, okay? So most people in the past were taught to kind of arch that lower back, okay? And then they also pinch their shoulder blades back. But that will also greatly hinder your mobility when it comes to rotation, okay? So if I arch my lower back and I pull my shoulder blades together, I feel very, very rigid in my back, and my, my arms are gonna feel really, really like kind of rigid against my body like this. So it's completely okay for your lower back to just be flat, okay? So you can see that adjustment that I've made is I went from an arched position to a more flat lower back. So I just kind of tucked my hip a little bit more kind of underneath me, okay, in order to get that lower back flat. And then second is that you can just relax your shoulder blades. You don't have to pinch them together. You can relax them so that there's maybe just a slight arch in my lower back there, okay? So if you are in this position, then it should feel like your arms are much more relaxed, your back is more relaxed, and you'll have a better sense of getting your body to actually rotate a little bit more. So all of these things combined can make a big, big difference in how well you can actually get yourself to rotate in the backswing and even in the follow through as well. So again, one more time, this would be the wrong kind of setup. Weight in the heels, a lot of bending in the knees, posture's really upright, but the difference between this one and the correct position would look something like this. You can kind of see the changes I've made here, okay? And right away from here, I feel like I can only move my arms, whereas here, I, can, I feel like I can get my body to go a lot better. My, it's easier for my knees to change flex, easier for my hips to rotate, all those things combined. So that's reason number one. So reason number two is how your knees change flex, okay? So from the side view, after you get yourself in the correct position, a lot of the times I see people that struggle with rotation, they actually like get their knees to bend more in their backswing. So they kind of look more like this, okay? So it's important to know that there has to be some amount of knee flex change throughout the backswing and even in the follow through as well, okay? And that's, that's what's gonna allow your hips to rotate back and forth. So a lot of times when you go back, if you keep that trail leg or that trail knee bent, that will really greatly limit how much your, your, your hips can rotate. So you can see when I, when I make my backswing, my knees will change flex, okay? You can see my lead knee will kind of bend and my trail knee straightens out just a little bit, 
okay? Now, it doesn't, you don't have to completely lock it out, okay? So that'll cause a lot of other issues um, that, you, that you don't want, okay? But there does have to be some amount of that, all right? Now, if you go back into your backswing and you change the knee flex, you should be able to feel like your hips can actually open up or point more this, more this way, okay? If you don't change the knee flex correctly, you'll, you tend to feel a lot more pressure kind of in your glute on the right side, um, and there's a bit of resistance there, okay? So if you don't do that, um, that may, f may confuse people into thinking that they have mobility or flexibility problems, but I haven't met anyone that if they change their knee flex enough or correctly, that they can get enough rotation in their backswing um, and also in the follow through. But in, when it comes to the follow through itself, same kind of thing, right? If my knees are kind of bent too long, my hips are kind of stopping or limiting themselves in the follow through. So even in the follow through, I have to like be able to, to straighten out my left leg or like the lead leg to allow my hips to kind of continue to open up. All right, so if you keep that knee bent, you'll, again, you'll feel a lot of resistance in that glute, and you'll tend to swing more with your arms. Okay, so one point from the face-on view is while you change your knee flex, you don't want to be kind of moving or swaying your hips kind of into the trail foot too much. Okay, that's another big mistake that will really greatly limit uh, mobility in the hips and, and also the shoulders when rotating. But you can see that the mistake when I demonstrate it is that even though I, I'm like trying to change the knee flex, my hip is kind of moving really off to the right like that, um, and, and I can't actually physically get my hip to kind of rotate around me this way. So it's important to note that if I were to have some sort of barrier right here, okay, along the right edge of my leg, that when I do change the knee flex, you can kind of see how the, the trail side of my hip would actually kind of start to move more back and around me, okay, instead of more into that line, okay? So that's a big mistake. Again, you're gonna feel like you, you're, you're greatly limited in your mobility if you do that. So as you change the knee flex, it's important that you get the trail side of your hip to feel like you're kind of, it gonna, goes back around you and behind you this way. So you should feel like it kind of moves a little bit away from that uh, border or that club I'm putting right next to me here. So it should look something like this, as opposed to this. I can really feel the difference in how much my, my hips can actually rotate. You could probably visually see it as well when I'm here, right? It kind of still, my hips still kind of face more so in front of me, whereas I can get my hips to kind of point more to the right or more open or closed. So reason number three has to do with how you're actually moving your neck relative to your body, okay? In the backswing and in the follow through. So most people, um, when they make their backswing, they actually start to like tilt or turn their neck almost against their shoulders. They kind of move it in the opposite direction. So if I'm turning this way with my chest, people kind of turn their head um, into their lead shoulder like this. Okay, so that's another big mistake that's going to really greatly limit uh, your mobility. So if you were to think about it, or even try it yourself, if you turn your chest and turn your head in the opposite direction, of, you're gonna very quickly feel a lot of resistance here, and that's gonna like discourage you from continuing to rotate your shoulders um, correctly. So you look kind of like, kind of like this, okay? So it's completely okay for your chin to kind of move a little bit in the direction of your turns, okay? Don't think that you have to keep your neck completely frozen, okay? Because again, you're gonna greatly limit how the range of motion in your shoulders when you're doing that. Okay, so you can either film yourself or just watch yourself in the mirror, but make sure that you're not physically turning your head into that lead shoulder. And a lot of the times when I adjust um, the people doing this to feel as though their, their head kind of turns more with their chest, they'll feel like their head kind of moves a little bit to the right. But in reality, their, their head isn't moving to the right like this, okay, as they turn. Their eyes are just moving more to the right, so that, that kind of, gives them some uh, false sense of, of what they're doing in reality. So remember, it's okay to get the chin to turn a little bit. And also in the follow through, you don't wanna kind of necessarily look the opposite way of your turns in the follow through. It's okay for your chin to kind of move a little bit more with uh, your turns in the follow through as well. You'll feel like it's a lot easier on your body. You don't have any strain in the neck. 
If you were to see my swing in slow motion here, as I take it back and I go through, you can see my head does not stay completely frozen, kind of back and through, okay? So maybe if I record another one doing it the incorrect way, you'll see a big difference in the range of motion, the shoulders and the hips. The last reason has to do with your tilts throughout the backswing and the follow through. Now this is really, really key as well because if I were to go to my backswing and not maintain my tilts at all, it would kind of look like this, okay? So I, I won't be able to really rotate. I'm basically just getting my posture to stand up and that's what's moving my arms throughout my backswing. And in the follow through, I see this a lot, all the time, but when someone goes through it, they kind of look like this, right? You can kind of see the whole right side of my body is kind of facing upwards. And then even my hip is also kind of very level to the ground, okay? So when you are able to kind of maintain your tilts, that's actually gonna allow or make it easier for your body to kind of rotate on, on that kind of tilted angle uh, around your posture, okay? As soon as you kind of let go of that, you're gonna kind of raise it up like this. Things will kind of tend to look really flat um, and then you'll kind of look like this in the fall through where you're just kind of pulling your arms or your right shoulder, kind of rolling it over like this. So the reason why it's so important to tilt is because if I go through it and I kind of roll my right side over, you can kind of see that my, my, my arms kind of take over. So I'm just kind of rolling my arms over like this. But as soon as I maintain my posture, you can kind of see that I'm, I'm able to actually straighten up my lead leg which is gonna make it easier for my body to rotate more, okay? But in order for you to do that, you have to make sure that your weight finishes kind of on the outer edge of the heel of your lead foot, okay? So a lot of times that pe people lose their tilts, their weight kind of goes more into their toes and their lead foot, okay? And they kind of tend to, to kind of fall over this way or they'll tend to fall kind of forward, okay? So when I do it correctly, you can see that my weight kind of digs into the outer heel and that actually allows my lead leg to kind of straighten out more, okay? And like I explained in the previous reasons, the more I change my knee flex or I kind of straighten out my legs, that gives my hips the mobility it needs to kind of turn and kind of get out of the way, all right? So when you look at it from this perspective again, if I were to hit a shot rolling over, you can kind of see as my hips kind of or my right side raises, I can't quite straighten out my left leg very well. But if I hit another shot and I try to get my weight more kind of on the outer edge, my hip is kind of pushed back, then that allows my left leg to kind of straighten out and my hips can easily rotate around me, okay? So that's another really important reason that a lot of people don't really think about, but maintaining the tilt is gonna be so important, it should, that by itself should make it really easy to rotate. So one really great drill to give you awareness on how to maintain your tilts throughout the swing is to just get into that correct posture that I explained on reason number one. For the purpose of this video, just draw a line kind of right on the edge of my head. So that would represent the wall. And I'm just gently placing my head against the wall there. And when I make a backswing, I wanna make sure that as I'm changing the knee flex, things like that, I'm kind of keeping my head in the same spot. I'm not kind of raising away from that line because if I do, that means I'm kind of changing my posture and I'm losing my tilts, okay? So as my head is, is against that wall gently, I kind of turn and then as I go through it, I'm also keeping my head against that line, okay? So again, just like in the backswing, if my, in the follow through, my head raises away from it, I'm kind of losing my tilts, all right? And you should feel right away that if you do change your knee flex correctly and everything like that, you should feel like no resistance in your body. Your body should be able to open up quite freely um, if you were to maintain the tilts like that. But as soon as you kind of raise it and kind of feel the difference, you'll feel like your hip kind of goes more into the golf ball, harder to like straighten out your knees, and you'll feel like your arms take over. Okay, so this is a great one that I get a lot of my players to kind of rehearse um, quite often to kind of feel what it's like to kind of rotate around that posture without kind of losing all their tilts like that. So this is a really important fundamental that I teach everyone. And a lot of the times they can really feel the difference between doing it correctly versus kind of the, the way that they were doing it before. And um, they don't have any mobility problems. They're able to rotate without any issue.
Thank you guys so much for watching. Now, if you have any questions about anything that I talked about, you can leave a comment down below and be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. See you guys on the next one.